your energy level, mm. uh, if I gave you a scale between 1 and 10, 1 being no energy at all and 10 really high, over the last, say, three months, what would your average be for you? Five or six. Okay. And what's the quality of your sleep generally like? Do you have problems sleeping or you sleep well? You get to bed easily or...? Yeah, so it, it used to be really bad, actually, mm-hmm. but in the last two months, I think it's been really good. Okay. Yeah, so I am sleeping quite well. Okay. Do you have vivid dreams or mm, not really? Not really, not, not too okay. vivid, no. What is your energy out of 10 at the moment? What number do you give it? This exact moment? Yeah, roughly. Five? Shall I start? Yes, please. Okay. I thought it would be best if I just tell you a little about myself. So you know I am. My name is Anand Marshall. Uh, I'm a classical herbalist, Chinese herbalist, and I'm also uh, a Japanese acupuncturist. Uh, I qualified in 1998 as a TCM acupuncturist, which means traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, and then I went on to study Kampo, which is Japanese herbal medicine, in uh, 2000, I think it was. Um, and then later on I went to study Japanese acupuncture, a certain style of Japanese acupuncture. So although it's called Kampo, which is uh, Japanese health medicine, it actually came from China about 1100 years ago. Uh, it's based on a particular Chinese uh, theory called the Shanan Lun. Uh, so I, I, I learned that the, Jap- the Kampo system first, and then in 2010 I did a postgraduate in classical Chinese health medicine on the Shanan Lun. So I've kind of gone to this, got back to the source basically. So that's my background. Uh, I worked for the NHS for 13 years as an acupuncturist. Uh, I've been involved in teaching for about 20 years. And currently I teach uh, Chinese pathology and uh, I'm in charge of uh, the clinic at City College of Acupuncture in Old Street. Uh, so that's my, my background. I, what I thought would be useful before going, instead of going straight into a consultation, give some uh, some of the ideas that underlie Chinese medicine, because it, mm. it can be quite confusing for a patient to go straight in, and often I mean, it, you, you, the, the practitioner wouldn't have time to explain all this, because yeah. they wouldn't be t- have time to uh, yeah. do their consultation otherwise. So yeah. um, I think one of the most important things to remember within Chinese medicine is that if you said philosophically, what's the difference between conventional medicine and classical Chinese medicine? It's not that one is better than the other, it's just what the difference is. That um, Western medicine, they would say, treats uh, human diseases. Okay. So they're interested in the mass, if you like. How does this disease affect everyone and how we find a solution that treats everybody to not suffer from this condition? Mm-hmm. Uh, the concept of a side effect is acceptable. Mm-hmm. So providing it's minor, it's, it's okay to ha- 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 to, for it to occur. Okay. Um, but otherwise, that's, that's, that's roughly the, the big difference between that. In classical Chinese medicine, we're interested in why, um, rather than saying, look, looking at human disease, which why does um, disease affect this individual? Okay. So we're interested in the individual, not the mass. Yeah. The concept of the side effect within herbal medicines is that um, it's unacceptable. If you have a side effect, you're taking something too strong, too weak, mm-hmm. or no longer works, or incorrect, so you need to change your formula as the person gets stronger, weaker, catches coughs and colds, etc. You have to change your attack the whole time. So you be very flexible. So that's quite an important thing to remember, is one treats the mass, one treats the individual. Yeah. So what we're interested in is um, we, we look at people holistically. Yeah. So... We uh, say, for example, somebody had IBS. Mm. We wouldn't look at just IBS. We were looking at uh, how their mind might affect the condition, how uh, the weather might affect their condition, or how what foods might trigger their IBS. So mm. we're treating a pa- Melissa with IBS rather yeah. than IBS. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. So we need to look at trying to find. We call it pattern recognition or looking for patterns. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to find. 
somebody said to me once, uh, trying to find patterns in chaos. Ah, yeah, no, that, that makes so a lot of sense. So you're looking at a whole load of um, symptoms with the patient and yeah. we have to make, what, if, what connects everything? Mm. So what we try and emphasise is treating the underlying cause, not just the physical manifestation. And mm. the underlying cause can be a bit obscure for some people's thinking because mm. uh, it's not simple cause and effect. Mm. Uh, it's usually accumulation of things that create, that create an environment that allows disease to exist. Yeah. So that's what you try and do. Yeah. And the thing within Chinese medicine, you have what we call the five pillars of Chinese medicine. So you have acupuncture, herbs, twina, which is uh, which is like Chinese um, physical therapy or bone setting, uh, diet, and then a, a, an exercise. Mm. So um, each modality has a different uh, specialist area or thing that it can be really good at treating. Mm. So. I, I, I'm just an acupuncture and herbalist. I don't do physical therapy. I wouldn't know how to, but I can, I can use diet therapy. I don't know any Qigong exercises. I'm not a Qigong practitioner, but uh, I've got some basic ideas I can, I can use. So I, um, I work, in, not just me, but a good practitioner works in partnership with the patient. Yeah. So they look with them and say, okay, how did you end up here? And how do we make sure that you can create an environment that you can rehabilitate, rejuvenate, and not fall ill again? So yeah. it's, it's really a partnership. So yeah. the way I explain when I'm teaching with my students is, I said, imagine you've got a stool with three legs. One is treatment, one's an activity, and one is diet. So the chair cannot stand on one leg, it stands on three. The thing is, if you look, two legs are down to the patient. So most of the work is down to the patient. Okay. And it's actually... Me doing acupuncture or me doing herbs is one yeah. tiny piece. It's not going to be very effective if someone's going to do something that's actually working against them, which creates the environment which allows disease to exist. Yeah. So we try and empower people to help heal themselves, if that makes sense. Okay, so it's, it's all the different things coming together. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're the kind of ideas with how that, that I work and I think other, my colleagues do too. Yeah. So, I, I don't know if you have any questions on that at all. Gosh. Um, yeah, so, uh, it's also interesting to me. With um, the herbs and stuff like mm. that, is, compared to like Western medicine, are the herbs like a prescription you do once someone's ill? Or is it also something you, is it something you do constantly to maintain good health? Right, okay. Um, I think the same principle they use in, in herbs, they use with food. Okay. So you, and the thing is, you have to look at the individual because yeah. we're all unique, and what's good for one person isn't necessarily going to be good for another. So if you mm. understand the nature of your constitution, if you like, mm. then you know what the food you're more likely bet you should be eating. So um, in terms of diet therapy, which is a, a big modality on its own, I use it very kind of crudely, to be honest, compared to some real masters in the field. Um, I think there's three stages to diet therapy. One is when you eat, one is how much you eat, and lastly is the what. A lot of people concentrate on the what you eat, mm. but don't know the first two. So from a Chinese medical point of view, your digestive system is strongest from sunrise until midday. So your biggest meals need to be breakfast and lunch, because that's when your digestion is at its strongest and can absorb what it can most from the food at that time of day. Any time of midday, you should be actually eating less and easier to digest foods. Very often in the West, though, patients I treat here, like I saw someone today with the long COVID, and she just can't eat in the morning because she feels too ill. So mm. that immediately tells me that her digestion is shot to pieces. And I need to look at things I can fix there. Yeah. And try and also persuade her to have something to eat in the morning when her digestion is at its strongest and not to overload it when it's at its weakest, which is the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, so um, you, you, I think you shouldn't if you eat the right things because we say the pharmacy the kitchen's the first pharmacy if you get things right there then that. you don't fall ill hopefully yeah, in theory because yeah. a lot of Chinese herbs are actually things you find on the shelf ginger, cinnamon etc it's not anything yeah. that, that I mean cinnamon is the most used herb in, in the Shanalun which is the system that I use it's, it's revered for its effectiveness for treating many diseases in combination with other herbs obviously okay. so um, and that would determine on the weather as well what you'd be eating 
And the next thing is portion size. So if you you shouldn't be overloading your system, like yeah. you probably, I don't know if you've noticed, but in the West our plates and things are getting bigger, portion <laughs> size are getting bigger. Yeah. So <laughs> we're probably eating more than we really need. Mm. And we say in Chinese med that if you overload your system, you create something we say stagnation or a blockage. And the byproduct of that they, in Chinese medicine, they call it, we translate it in English as damp. And damp, damp yeah, and we say damp creates so many dis- other diseases. So okay. in order to avoid it, you eat at the right time and the right amount. So you eat mindfully. So yeah. you eat until you, you put a little bit, maybe the size of your palm of your hand, the amount of food you eat. And if you think, okay, I've had enough, you just stop. But if you yeah. fill the plate, most of us will finish what's on the plate because we're taught not to waste. Yeah. And also we don't really think about what we're eating. We just mindfully quickly eat. So it's when you eat, it's how much you eat, and lastly, what you eat. And the what you eat is dependent on what's wrong with you or what your constitution is, as we did, we'd we say in Chinese medicine. Wow, so there's a lot that goes yeah, into it. Yeah, sure. So the same principles used there is applied, is repeated everywhere else. Yeah. So in terms of herbs... Some people might need to on herbs for, you know, yeah, it could be maintenance herb. So for me, I, you know, I, I've got an autoimmune problem, so I live on herbs because if I don't, I'm going to have to be on immunosuppressants or steroids. Gosh, so okay. instead of doing that, I use herbs to try and stay off it. And so far, 15 years I've been clean. That's clean really impressive. It. Yeah, it, it's hard work because I need to make sure my weight's right, I have to make sure my diet's correct, and I have Gosh. to make sure. I know I don't over-exercise or under-exercise, but, you know, at least yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm well there otherwise. Oh, that's, I'm glad to yeah. hear that. <laughs> wow, so, it's amazing that the herbs can... Yeah, they're really, nice. really powerful yeah. if used correctly, mm-hmm. uh, like, like anything, I suppose. Yeah, like yeah. anything, like in moderation, I guess, not yeah. going too crazy and yeah. worrying yeah. about only having extremely healthy things, I guess, also is and the opposite. And the thing aspect, about what's really. healthy, I think, is very much... There's a lot of um, fads out there. Yeah. So you'll find what is healthy. It will vary from time to time depending on whatever the latest fad is out there. But Chinese medicine hasn't really changed much in 3,000 years. It's, it's pretty a, much it's a solid to thing yeah. to trust. Yeah. yeah. How do you actually... Uh, sorry, because I don't Go really on. know Chinese. How do you spell the... Uh, sorry, the school you said it was. The, the Chinese word you keep saying. Uh, the, oh, the lineage system... That, that I yeah, that, the Shan Han Lu. Yeah, S H A N H A N L U N. Okay, just if I want to look it up yeah, later, yeah, I was like, sure. I'm not going to remember this. Yeah, word. to be honest, it's a pretty obscure thing to read. It's it's quite hard to read. You really need somebody who knows classical medicine to explain what it means because oh. I read it and it doesn't make any sense. And because like my teacher read it to me with commentaries, oh, okay. I understood it. If you just, it's like if you could, can you imagine. Well, when I spoke to Chinese colleagues and I, and I was saying, so, oh, how come you didn't understand it? And it's, can you imagine reading, if you read Chaucer? Okay. You know, and that was written, <laughs> what century? 13th century, was it? Something like that. Literally no clue. Oh, I don't know, I've got the right century. But It's definitely old. Yeah, it's very old. It's old in <laughs> Shakespeare anyway. A lot older. But we needed to be taught what they meant because the spelling was different, the yeah. words don't exist anymore, the grammar was in, in different. The Shandland was written... I think 200 BC. Fair enough. So yeah. no wonder they need someone to explain what it meant. Yeah. Know? So and language changes yeah, a lot over exactly, time. So. Exactly. But the ideas, you know, have, have remained constant. So. Wow. Well, I guess humans are still humans. So yeah. 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 We've all got two legs and two arms <laughs> and a head and a body, and you know that. Uh, the, the, the amazing thing about Chinese medicine is that they were amazing observers of nature and how we fitted in nature, and then you. What happened in nature happens with us. Yeah. So certain uh, conditions they understood have do and probably always will plague up back pain, yeah. migraines, headaches, fatigue, anxiety, panic attack, diarrhea, constipation, chills, fevers. They, they they observe these things always happen under set certain circumstances. Mm-hmm. So they don't worry about new labels coming out, COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. They already knew what to do because respiratory infections have always been here. Yeah. So you didn't have to come up with a new idea. New. It's, it's, it's exactly in the Shan and Lun, exactly as it described it, 200 BC. So um, it really was no big deal to us to, really, yeah. to look at it, understand how it works. It's really impressive that stuff's been around that long and it's still... Yeah, the geniuses put it together, but just amazing how they did it. Gosh, 
Yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> so that, I thought that'd be useful to have a bit of yeah, theory yeah, to, uh, because most people wouldn't get the chance to hear this when they go in for a consultation. So yeah, I, no, I hope thank I you for explaining it to me as well. Like, I'm really happy to hear about right. it. Is there anything you want to ask me, or should we just go into the consultation? Uh, yeah, I think that's enough question-wise from me. I can't think of any others. I'm sure they'll come to me later, and I'll <laughs> recur. Yeah, no problems any time. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm going to ask you a lot of questions because I'm looking for clues like a detective in terms of how I can help you. Okay. And then I'll know what to prescribe based on what you say. Um, At any time you don't want to answer any personal questions, feel free to stop. You can tell me off camera or or not answer at all. It's perfectly okay. Or any time you want to ask me any questions, feel free to stop me, yeah? Okay. So how can I help you today? Is there anything specific you'd like to focus on? Um, So... It's a, it's a bit of a strange one, but uh, recently I have been getting temperatures quite mm. often. Um, I, Fever, you said. Yeah, yeah okay. but low ones. So mm. often, so, uh, I don't have COVID for once. Yeah. It's a, I did LFT and I did catch it a few months ago. Okay. Um, How long have you been getting them for? Since about May, so, and it's on and off, like sometimes once a month. Uh, twice a month and they're usually like the low 37s like yeah okay. so enough that I can still try go to work and carry on mm. my life but it's a bit how, hard to do how long with. do they last for? Um, so if I get it usually later in the evening when I think I'm tired from the day in the evening you get it yeah and it feels like my body's overworked itself and then mm. I sleep it off and I'm fine the next day okay yeah. So it can. So oh, okay. So it comes on in the evening. Yeah, it's. I can't think of any time I've had it in the morning, but I am rushing around a lot more in the morning, so less mm. likely to realise as well. I guess. So when you said you start feeling hot, do you get? Do you sweat? No. You just feel no, hot. Just do your eyes feel hot? Um, I'm not really sure about no. my eyes. Maybe maybe it's. Or it feels like my forehead. Forehead. Oh, and um. Like here, I notice it as well. My neck, but yeah, I've tried to get in the habit of actually taking my temperature a lot more. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Do you strange. get thirsty? Are you thirsty at that time as well? No. No, not particularly. I I do drink okay. quite a lot of water. So. Right. Uh, but you you don't get more thirsty than usual. No. 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 So you, you just get hot. Do you get palpitations with it or? Dizziness with it or uh, fatigue dizziness, with it? Yes, dizziness, yes. Yeah. Dizziness when you get one? Yeah. Do you get palpitations? Um, so I sometimes have chest pain anyway, but I think it's unrelated. I don't okay. think it's heart palpitations. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and and uh, do you get night sweats? Mm, no, I don't think so. No. It's just yeah. hot recently, just hot. so yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to tell at the moment, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. So just to recap, it, yeah. it started roughly in May 2022, a low grade sort of fever heat mm-hmm. you get it once or once once a month one, two yeah, times once a month. twice a month once yeah. two times a month and it's usually evening and it's your forehead side of your neck feel hot yeah and you get dizziness with it yeah you get and to do you get down. fatigue with it yeah yeah i think i have that a lot anyway <laughs> okay but yeah uh, is there anything else i missed with that um so I, I actually wondered at first if it was related to my period, mm-hmm. um, but I can't seem to find a correlation. Okay, all so, right. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you for that. Yeah, sorry, there's no, no, so sorry. much it was. Bear, bear with me. I'm going to ask you now. I'm going to start the digging because okay. this is just a, a symptom. I need to look, find the underlying potential causes. Mm-hmm. So your energy level, mm-hmm. uh, if I gave you a scale between 1 and 10, 1 being no energy at all and 10 really high, over the last, say, three months, what would your average be for you? Five or six. Okay. And what's the quality of your sleep generally like? Do you have problems sleeping or you sleep well? You get to bed easily or...? Yeah, so it, it used to be really bad, actually, mm-hmm. but in the last two months, I think it's been really good. Okay. Yeah, so I am sleeping quite well. Okay. Do you have vivid dreams or mm, not really? Not really, not not too good, okay. no. Okay. And do you wake up with energy, or do you... F- yeah, you do? yeah. Okay. When I wake up in the morning, I'm usually fine. Okay. 
Your diet, what's that like? Do you have a varied diet? Are you restricted in any way or...? No, not really restricted. You can eat everything? Yeah, except I'm not that fussy. Okay. And a few things I don't like. Okay. Yeah. You don't have any intolerance, allergies, anything food-wise? Um, I'm not certain about it, but like if I eat too much bread, I feel a bit okay. yucky. Okay. <laughs> and uh, would you say you have an appetite or do you find it hard to eat? No, I've got an appetite. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> I wish I didn't, but oh, I eat a lot. <laughs> I've already nothing more than that. Um, would you say your thirst is appropriate to your lifestyle? You, or you're an excessively thirsty person or... Mm. Not really a thirsty person. I drink a lot of tea, and okay. and then is that a habit or is that because it's thirsty? There's a habit. I'm obsessed oh. with green tea, so oh, I, green tea. Yeah, I don't drink coffee, so I think I rely on right. tea for caffeine. How much is a lot for you? How many cups? On a really really bad day, I'd have like six cups. Six cups. But most days, about four. That's not too bad. Yeah. I thought you were going to really kind of frighten me then. But <laughs> okay. Um, do you have any allergies? Cats, dogs, dust, hay fever? Hay fever I hay have, fever. yeah. But and that's it, the only one. Is it mild or is it quite severe? Or? Weirdly, um, it used to be, I remember it being worse as a kid, but maybe that's because I actually would like itch my eyes. Right, and now? It's not that bad. It's livable, just a bit okay. of an itchy nose and sniffles. He said itchy nose, yeah, and, and runny nose, is it? Or just itchy? It's dry, actually. Like, it's dry, okay. Which is why it gets really annoying. Okay, so itchy nose, and you mentioned something else, sorry, I missed that. Um, just like, yeah, sniffles and itchy eyes if I rub oh. them, but yeah, okay. just try not to touch All them. Right. Are you prone to um, any breathing issues, like asthma or general shortness of breath? Shortness of breath, I do yeah. get quite a bit, yeah. Do you? Okay. Do you, you, you use an inhaler? Mm -hmm. No, 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 no I didn't, I've never had anything, like, diagnosed. Okay. It. And uh, are you prone to um, lightheadedness, fainting? Um, no, I've never fainted no. or anything okay. like that, no. And would you describe yourself generally as hot or cold or neither? Most of the year, it's hard to judge today because it's summer. Yeah, it is hot, it is hot. Most the of the year cold, yeah. And when you say you feel cold, is that cold hands and feet? Yeah. How yeah. about the body as well? Was it more like, more like hands and feet? The worst is hands and feet, yeah. Sometimes like to the extent that I can't actually like, it's really cold. hard to move. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Mm. I'm a very cold person. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is, um, um, this isn't to judge you, I think it's just for medical reasons, but do you smoke at all? No. Do you drink at all? Rarely. Okay. Um, and are you prone to pain anyway generally? Are you prone to uh, like neck joint pains or lower back problems or not um, really? get really stiff shoulders, yeah. but it's probably my bad posture. Okay. Your medical history, any major accidents, illnesses, operations? No. Are you on any prescribed medication at present? No. No. Take your pulse, please. Yes. So what I'll do, if I can take the left one first. Thank you very much. Just feeling the temperature. I'm going to be quiet. Bear with me. Where's your energy out of 10 at the moment? What number would you give it? This exact moment? Yeah, roughly. Five? Yeah, okay.
take the other parts, please, as well. Pulse is very deep. Yeah. Mm. I'm pressing quite hard to find it. But it's got this side is stronger, which is the good side to be strong on. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I have been told it's weak before, so. Mm. What I'd like to do also is, is look at your abdomen, if I may, because in Japanese herbal, me- well, in Kampo, in London, they um, use the abdomen to diagnose, not just the pulse. Okay. So is, like is it right to lie down on the bed? Oh, and yeah, I feel yeah, of course. Stomach, if it's okay. okay. Does anything feel strange, uncomfortable, painful? Okay. Is that okay? Is that uncomfortable? Yeah, uncomfortable, I think. And this one? Yeah. Is, is one side worse than the other? Yeah, the right's worse, I think. The right feels worse, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to make notes. Tell me if this is tender at all. No, it feels fine. That's fine. Um, more so than the other side, I think. This is a little bit tender too. Yeah. It shouldn't be painful, but it just tells me if I can feed it or not. That's okay, no pain? No, not really. Okay. Right, I'm going to lower the bed for you, so you can... You can cover yourself with a look. Thank you. So, broad, kind of massively uh, simplified for the sake of discussion, but we, we can put herbs into different categories. So, so when we use herbs, we, we use formulas. We don't use single herbs. Okay. They're in combination. So sometimes um, some of the herbs won't have anything to do with what you're trying to treat, but they're there to, design, to try and prevent side effects. Okay. And try and protect the body from some of the stronger actions of some herbs. So the herbs, the forms of what we call balanced, hot, yeah. cold, sweet, sour, etc. Direction going up, down, or outwards. Okay. So um, if I was going to massively simplify, you can think of herbs in like different families, if you like. So one set of family of herbs, we can call them um, fighting formulas, as my Japanese teacher would call them. Uh, and th- these formulas were used for uh, treating infections, uh, bacteria, viral things, etc. But you'll use them short term because we consider them toxic. We consider them very cold okay. because they're very cold. We dam- we use the word yin and yang, so it means it will damage yang. So mm-hmm. you use it for a short period of time to kill. I don't know. It could be used for say pneumonia, bronchitis, certain types of infections in the body. Uh, and then once it's done its job, then you need to repair the damage that was created by the disease, but also by the cold herbs. So, mm-hmm. uh, so they're, they're fighting forms of herbs, and, and that's not you. Okay. Right? You, you know, you, you didn't have a very fast pulse, and I saw no other signs of thing that I needed cold herbs that would treat that. Okay. The other type of herbs we would use would be herbs, we say, which are clearing. Sometimes they use the word clearing, expelling formulas. And, and if you want to clear or expel, you, the only way, you literally get something out of the body. Okay. So that would either make somebody sweat more, pass more water, or pass more stools, mm-hmm. or in extreme circumstances, vomit. Now, I'll never use a vomit, vomiting formula. I don't know how to use it, but <laughs> my teacher was saying the reason, perhaps, you know, at a time when those herbs were used, where there wasn't mm-hmm. the NHS or anything, you know, they didn't yeah. have antibiotics, etc. Mm-hmm. So people who have been very ill would might have needed these sort of treatments back then, you know, yeah. 200 BC. So. That again, that's not you. Generally, we'd use that form of somebody quite robust. 
okay. somebody who may be hot all the time, raging thirst, etc. Oh. And you think, um, okay, this person needs emptying. There's something yeah. in there that needs clearing out of the body. And again, that's for you. The other forms we use are like, we call them tonics, formulas, to make you stronger, to oh. repair. And that's the category you fall into. It sounds yeah. right. <laughs> so that, that's you. So what would usually happen would, I would um, contact my pharmacy, they will make the herbs and have them sent to me and I'd I, I like to mm. pass them to you. Uh, they come in a powder form, not like the old days where you had to boil them and make teas and things. Yeah. Um, they're all pre-prepared. I, I used uh, a company who supply a product by a company called Sunten, and Sun 10 supplied the NHS in Japan since 1960 or something. Wow. So they've been around that long. So yeah. they, they, pharmaceutical, big pharmaceutical company, they test the herbs to see chemically what are they, mm. what is, how potent are they, because they're only natural year yeah. to year. They might need to alter the dosage because that year the plant didn't produce the right amount of flavonoids or something because yeah. because the weather affects the, the quality of the herbs. Yeah. So they would test that, but also they will label it in Latin rather than in Pinyin, which is Chinese English. Mm-hmm. The reason being the Latin is precise and it's from the Materia Medica, which is the book they used up in Kew Gardens. Oh, okay. So the botanical books, if you like. So that's that's the company that I use, but yeah. obviously other herbalists use other other systems. And mm. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying how I would work. Yeah, yeah. and that's what I would do. Okay. And that's it, really. Yeah. Oh well, thank you for for listening to all my no, no, worries. No, fine. That's my job. <laughs> do it all day long. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> cool.